This is for the lowest, it's one of the lower rainfall areas. And so what we've done is, from the benefits, subtract the costs. And so, uh, I don't know if you sort of afraid to go back on this with it. You just believe me that you, they're starting with the lowest opportunity cost places to put trees first. And the last place they would put trees is in the high marginal cost areas on the best land. And those curves, you could say it's, a, it's sort of a demand curve for water. Demand curve for water to plant trees. However, the water is, uh, in New South Wales, there's actually no restriction on uh, water use for planting trees. Uh, there is in Southeast Australia, South Australia, where we have five. So uh, we'll look at the case with a, uh, without any requirement to purchase water rights from downstream, and we'll look at the case with. Let's go. This is a, uh, a low run rainfall area. This next one is, yep, and this one. Can I go back? Yeah. That's the high rainfall, a thousand millimeter area. And you see it goes from, it goes up as far as 85 gigaliters of water at the very high value of products. So when you take demand curves of individual areas, uh, we want to aggregate those demand curves. And what you do there is you, uh, you add them horizontally. So we add the demand curves for let's say $50, $60. Add, for the $60 class, uh, you add the demand curves. Yeah. Okay, so for each of those prices, we've taken all of the $40 ones and aggregated them horizontally. And so this is the aggregate demand for water for new tree plantations. For fifty dollars a cubic meter, sixty and seventy, and the reason they, this looks like a can of worms is you're adding up these curvy, curvy demand curves. Now, supply curves for water. Uh, this is what we're positing for the uh, value of water uh, uh, for the downstream irrigators and. Uh, stock and domestic users. And this is where we're saying any change from today, if they're giving up water, they would give it up along the, an increasing schedule. And if they would, they would pay more, they would pay for more water only if they could get it for less. And that's the case for stock and domestic too. Assuming a much more, uh, uh, well, they're, they really need a certain amount, and they can go above or below that, but they don't need much more. If you take those two curves, and now strike them from zero up, this is the aggregate supply curve for, for water. That's what people would give up their entitlements for. Now we're in a position to find equilibrium values between the supply and demand curves for water. And this is the $60 and $70 cases. <coughs> $70. Uh, demand curve for water by trees, and the uh, $60 one. And the next, this is the, uh, where the cross gives you the equilibrium uh, level of trades expected, and the prices that you'd expect. Two minutes. Let me zoom. Okay, I'm going to show you the results. Now, I showed you all those different locations within the uh, uh, catchment. So you've got, we're going from the highest rainfall down to the lowest rainfall uh, parts of the catchment, and we've got irrigator stock and domestic. So this is a, this is the the result. The fifty dollar for the case of the fifty dollar uh, for cubic meter uh, uh, wood products, it's the, the second node here on each of these curves. So simultaneously, it's the the fifty dollar results are the ones with the arrows pointing to. And you can see the other nodes being up to 40, 50, 60, and 70 dollars. Okay. This is the changes in annual use. 
of water predicted. In the case that there's no market, that is, you don't have to buy water to, to plant trees. And so these use more water, and these have less water to use because of that downstream. In the case there is a market, where you have to buy water to plant trees, this is what we're predicting. Much less use of, much less tree planting, and there's compensation here for that use. Then areas of new tree plantations, they mirror the water use. Uh, much higher numbers of trees with, uh, uh, if you don't have to pay for the water, much lower if you do. And then changes in economic surplus. Again, much bigger changes if there's no market. And these are just losses here. And so sort of windfall gains over there. And those are reduced with the equilibrium where actually everybody's better off upstream and downstream. Can we finish? Ah, okay. So that's it. 15 seconds. 15 seconds. <laughs> so this is basically, you have, where you have high rainfall area, you have a conflict in water use. If you put in trees, it's going to reduce water flows, just about for sure. And we're projecting the cases with and without the requirement to uh, uh, pay for water. And there you have it. So I'll leave it for questions now, oh. if there's time.